so excited for this series that begins next Sunday. And so look on social media, those of you that are on Facebook and um, Instagram, we want to be able to blitz people with this, to be able to let them know what's going on. You know, and you may not know each person on the screen, but these are, these are part of your family here from New Hope. And these stories are absolutely phenomenal. And I know it's going to touch so many hearts and lives and speak. Uh, every time I watch this video, I get choked up and emotional inside just to hear their story. We all have stories and we need to tell stories a whole lot more. And so these are going to be part of this series, all leading up to Christmas as we talk about Jesus being the hope of all ages, the hope of the world. And so uh, we're excited about that. Get on, share, share the link to that video, and uh, invite your friends, neighbors. I know it's gonna be a, a tremendous series, and we're really, really excited, looking forward to it. So this morning, we're finishing up a series on thankfulness. It's uh, Thankful 30 is what we called this month, and we've encouraged and challenged all of you to uh, be a lot more positive to watch your words and your attitudes and your actions toward other people just about stuff and things. And so I, I know it's a challenge. It's, it's hard for us to be uh, thankful in everything, to be positive and not, I mean, how many of you have caught yourself words coming out of your mouth and going, ah, I was, I was doing the thankful thing. Or it's like even hours later you thought, it didn't even strike me. It's like, I had that moment. You know, if, if even in our conscious we become more aware of the words we're saying and the attitudes that we have and our actions, I think we've, we've, we've done well. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna do our very best and there's such an opportunity for us if we will just take that, that goal. Now, um, I know he, he didn't give me permission to share this, but, but Bob Stewart was telling me this morning that this week he's, he's done his absolute best with being thankful 30 and he actually this week um, he got a complainer card. It's even red. He at the cleaners had a button off of his shirt and guess what they did to him? They wrote him up. It says complaint. He got a complaint card. It's because he talked about his button. So demerit, Bob. But did you get your button fixed? <laughs> Good to you. I'm gonna let you hold on to that. You might need, that might come in handy sometime. I have a card to complain. Anybody else get a complaint card? I think framing it would be good. Are y'all awake? Are y'all ready? Well, we're finishing this series on, uh, on Thankful 30, and uh, I want to talk to us this morning just a little bit about uh, counting our blessings, and the title of this message is Add It All Up, and I've just used this equal sign, equals being blessed. There's a story of, a, of an elderly lady who is well known for her faith and her boldness in, in uh, talking about it. And uh, each morning she would go out on her front porch, she would greet each new day by shouting, praise the Lord, thank you, thank you Jesus for another beautiful day. And I kind of picture her like Miss Clara on War Room. How many of you saw that movie? So I, I, I'm not gonna do good in my impersonation of her, but uh, next door to this lady lived a, a man who didn't believe in God. And so he got angry at her daily going out and, and praising the Lord and with her prayers, and he began shouting back, there ain't no Lord, there ain't no God. That was, that was my dramatic voice for you. <laughs> but, but his angry shouts didn't intimidate her, and each day she kept greeting each day with praises and prayers on her porch, and each morning he would continue responding to her. And then hard times hit this elderly lady and um, she prayed for God to send some help. And she stood on her porch that morning and she prayed, praise the Lord. Lord, I, you've been so good to me, but, but right now, God, I, I'm, I'm really in need and I'm having a hard time. Please, please send me some food. And so the next morning she went out on her porch and she saw a large bag of groceries sitting there. And the first thing she did was say, praise the Lord. And her neighbor jumps out from the bushes and he said, I told you there ain't no God. I'm the one that provided those groceries for you. <laughs> she started clapping her hands and she was thankful. And she said, praise the Lord. God not only sent me groceries, but he used the devil to buy them. <laughs> Verse 
There's a, there is a reason to be thankful in every situation, in every circumstance, and if we will just continue to let the fruit of our lips give praise to the Lord, thank him for what he's done for us, let the words of our lips encourage people around us, it's, it's a blessing, but we need to have a perspective, and t- hopefully today uh, we, we can uh, kind of give a little bit of that perspective. But the purpose of this whole month of being thankful um, is, is that we live thankful lives, that we watch what we say, that we're intentional about not using negative words. We're intentional about using uh, right words and having right attitudes toward people and situation and our circumstances. The way to be positive in our words, our attitudes, and our action is truly to be thankful. And the only way for us to truly be thankful is to have a close personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 2.5 says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now, um, the New Living Translation says it's more simple to me. It says, you must have the same attitude as Christ. Have the same attitude as Christ. Jesus humbled himself, Scripture goes on to say. He became a servant, and and he was obedient to everything that God gave him to do. 1 John 4, 15 and 16 says, all who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. And we know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. It's this relationship with God and and his love that's in us. You know, God's love is amazing. How many of you found that to be true? God's love is an amazing love. The fact that he loves us the way he does, it's an amazing thing. The Bible tells us that he demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, he died for us. He demonstrated his love by giving his life on a cross and dying for us. Talking about a personal relationship with Jesus, it begins and is sustained by his love for us. And out of this relationship, We become more like him with our words, with our attitudes, and with our actions. Paul speaks of this love and this relationship with the Lord in Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 19, where he says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. How many of us need to be complete and need to experience that fullness of God in our life, his power at work in us? See, Paul, in this prayer, he prays that we would be empowered by his spirit, that we would be strengthened by his love. Jesus making his home in our hearts, our roots, growing down deep into his love. What a picture. His love that is so wide, so long, so high, and so deep. My prayer this morning is that every one of us in the room would experience God's love in a fresh way. Some of you have known God's love. Some of you are so far from that, you don't even know what I'm talking about. And my prayer is that every single one of us would, would be able to experience God's love in a, in, a, in a new and a fresh way. And I'm gonna give you an, a, an invitation and an opportunity to respond at the end to, to grow closer to the Lord or to open your heart maybe for the very first time and invite him to come into your life. As I said, God's love is amazing. Scripture compares God's love multiple times to an ocean or to uh, the, the heavens. You know, I've shared this before, but the ocean at its deepest point is seven miles deep. That's a long, long way. Just to put in context how, how far that is, I, I looked on Google Maps and from, from the church to the East Mixmaster where uh, 235 and 3580 all mix up, it's ex- almost exactly seven miles. Imagine that 
deep, full of water. We realize the ocean is an overwhelming picture. If God's love is like an ocean, it is so deep. It's amazing. You know, while the ocean has a floor, it's still a vast body of water. But scripture also talks about God's love, the height of his love. You know, commercial, commercial airliners, interestingly, fly uh, somewhere between 31,000 and 38,000 feet, which is roughly approximately seven miles in the air. It's kind of unique that that's the case. Seven miles high in an airplane, but yet while the ocean, floor ha- the ocean has a floor, there's no ceiling to the air, the sky. You see, we can go even beyond that and we get into outer space. We get into the universe where we no longer measure by feet or by miles, but we measure it by light years. A light year. Anybody know how much that is? 5.88 trillion miles. That's a lot more than seven. Um, 5.88 5.88 trillion miles, it, and if you break it down per second, it's 186,000 miles per second, which is 670 million miles in an hour. So we're measuring by light, light years. So, so the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, you can go around the earth seven and a half times in one second. That's how fast that is. So just to put 186,000 miles into context, if you were to drive in a car at our speed limit of 70 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, it would take you 2,657 hours of driving to go 186,000 miles. That's roughly 110 days, which is approximately 16 weeks. So that means if you started today driving in a car 70 miles an hour, you didn't take any potty breaks, you didn't take any food breaks, you didn't stop to get gas, you were driving constantly for 70 miles per hour for those 110 days, 16 weeks, you would, you would get there on March 10th, which just happens to be um, the day that we move clocks forward. So we even lose an hour there. So we come out, we come out <laughs> even further behind. But that's amazing to go 186,000 miles and the speed of light travels that in a second. We're talking about God's love and how great God's love is. Light travels that far in a second. It would take us 8.3 minutes to travel at that speed to, to reach the sun. But as we talk about that, we're just talking about a microcosm of our galaxy the Milky Way galaxy, which is actually 100,000 light years across. So at 186,000 miles per second, it would take you 110,000 years to cross the Milky Way. So when we talk about the height of God's love, and see beyond that, beyond our galaxy, they say that there are billions of galaxies out there. So when we talk about God's love, the vastness of his love, it's, it's, it's more than amazing. Psalm 103, 11 says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for you. How does that make you feel? What does, that, what does that do for you? You realize that you are greatly, greatly loved. Two chapters after this Ephesians chapter three where Paul talks about the, the depth and the width and the breadth and the height of his love. Uh, he writes these words, while in a prison in Rome, Ephesians 5, 19, he says, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. While in prison, he's writing these words to churches all over the region, and he's saying this. While he's in prison, he's saying, sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. We know that Paul in prison in the book of Acts was doing just that. 
And it was through that act that he was delivered from that prison as they were praising at midnight. If you've heard that story or read that story, the gates opened, the, the, the guards were like they were dead, and they were able to just walk out of prison. The, the, it was a shaking going on as they were worshiping and praising God in prison. But this is, this is not just what Paul's telling them to do. This is who he was. This is how he lived. And he said, and he said to give thanks always, always giving thanks to God for everything. You see, Paul learned the true meaning of of thanksgiving even in the midst of adversity. If you think of it, always giving thanks for everything, no matter the circumstances. Anybody say, that's my life, that's, that's me. In any and every circumstance, in all things, always giving thanks to the Lord. That seems like a, 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 a super high standard. But Paul's saying there's reason for us to live that way. Paul, for Paul, Thanksgiving isn't, wasn't a once a year celebration. It was a daily reality. And that daily reality of always giving thanks to God in every circumstance was life changing. It made him a joyful person in every situation. You see, Thanksgiving, the giving of thanks to God for all his blessings, it should be one of the most distinctive marks of every believer in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. The giving of thanks to God for all his blessings should be one of the most distinctive marks of every believer in Christ. Paul says in Ephesians 3, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. See, we can't allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our heart or grow cold our relationship with God and others. Nothing is gonna turn us into bitter, selfish, sour, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. Let me say that again. Nothing is gonna turn us into a bitter, selfish, sour, dissatisfied person more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing is gonna do more for, to restore our contentment than a spirit of thankfulness. Daniel Defoe was an author. He uh, wrote a story you might have heard of, Robin, Robinson Crusoe, written in April of 1719, so literally almost 300 years ago. In the story of Robinson Crusoe, the first thing that he did, he found himself shipwrecked on an island. He made out a list. And on one side of the list, he wrote all of his problems. On the other side of that list, he wrote down all of his blessings. On the one side, he wrote, I, have, I don't have any clothes. On the other side, he wrote, but it's warm and I don't really need any. On one side, he wrote, all the provisions were lost. And on the other side, he wrote, but there's plenty of fresh fruit and water on this island. And on down the list he went and he discovered that for every negative aspect of his situation, there was also a positive aspect, something to be thankful for. It's easy for us to fall into an island of despair. And I believe that it's time for each and every one of us to sit down and take inventory of our blessings. Do you do this on a regular basis? If we're to give thanks to God all the time, always giving thanks to God in every circumstance, we should have lists and we should be able to recite those lists and communicate all the things that we know that God has done for us. There are many here this morning, you are long, long overdue in giving thanks to the Lord. Elmer Neusendorfer shared this thought with me last Sunday after uh, Pastor Hawkins' message, and, and I want you to think about this. What if, when you woke up in the morning, all you had were the things that you gave thanks for today? What if you wake up in the morning and the only thing that you had were the things that you gave thanks for today? Would that change your thankfulness? Would it change how you see about what you have and what you've been blessed with? James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good thing is from God. Every good thing is from God. It's not fate. It's not chance, it's not karma or coincidence, it is a blessing from God. 
And there is an intentionality behind every single blessing that we receive from him that most people are complete, completely oblivious to. There's an intentionality behind every single blessing, but your capacity as a believer in Jesus to have joy and satisfaction and delight exceeds the wealthiest people in the world. And it's because of your awareness of God's love. God's love changes everything. I'm telling you, a relationship with God is the thing that's gonna make you thankful in this world. His love is what changes us. You're different from everybody else. The only way that you're gonna experience that joy and satisfaction is through his love. And I wanna explain it like this. Imagine that you're struggling financially. And one day as you walk along the sidewalk, you look down and you see a thousand dollar bill. How many of you would be excited? How many of you have ever found money on the ground? Okay, this happened to me a couple of times in the past year. I was, at, I was at Quick Trip one morning and I got out of my truck and I'm walking on the sidewalk up to the door and I look down and I see something green on the ground and of course I just reach down, pick it up, have it in my hand and I just kind of look down at the corner of it. It's a $20 bill, kind of folded up in, in half and in half again. So I've got it in my hand and I'm walking in the store going, okay, I wonder whose $20 bill this is. And I, my mind starts playing tricks on me and I'm thinking, was this a setup by somebody? They're just wanting to see how I, how I, how I handle this. And so I've got it in my hand and I'm there getting my drink at Quick Trip and, and, I, and I'm realizing that the, the feel of this feels a little bit strange. I think that there's more than a $20 bill here and I look down and I bend back the corner, there's two 20s folded up together. So all of a sudden I'm going, okay, I don't know who's watching me. I don't know what's going on here. What do I do in this situation? But I'm thinking, how many times have I had something where I had something in my pocket? I had a situation where I had something in my pocket and I, maybe I pulled out keys and, I, and I've lost money myself. And I'm thinking somebody's, I mean, $40 is, it's not just change. $40 would be a nice gift. And uh, so as I'm going up to pay, I'm kind of in the struggles. I'm waiting in line and I get up there and I, I said, I found this, uh, this money laying on the sidewalk as I was walking in the store. And he just says, okay, thank you, takes it from me and just sets it on the counter. And I'm thinking, if that's all you're gonna do with it, I, I wouldn't have give, given it to you. I'm thinking somebody else is needing it somewhere. I'm thinking, this guy's just gonna stick it in his pocket. Dummy, what'd you give him the $40 for? But I gave it to him and I felt like that's the right thing that I needed. I have no idea what happened to that $40. But it does something amazing when you have that money. And it's like, I didn't, I didn't earn this. It's just, it was right there for the taking. So you're imagining finding a $1,000 bill, right? So I had another situation. I was at, I was at uh, Sam's Club earlier. Uh, it was in January. I parked uh, out a ways, which is typical for what I do. I can't say that I park out all, super far away every time, but I did this particular time. And this morning, as I, you know, preparing this message and thinking about what I'm sharing and being thankful, I thought I could park over here in the grass, which is a, an okay place for me to park. The pastors, we try to park out a ways and leave spaces here in the parking lot for people that show up. This morning, I decided I'm parking as far away as I can at the student campus. So I'm parked by the garage over at the student campus, not to brag on me. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to practice being thankful that I've got feet and legs that can get me here. And I, I can park that far away so that somebody else can park closer. This particular morning, I was at Sam's Club and I, I parked my truck and I locked the door and I walked around the back and underneath the back of my truck, underneath the bumper, I see, again, I see some green on the ground and I reached down to pick it up. And as I'm walking, I looked at my hand, I'm thinking, this isn't a normal bill. It was a hundred dollar bill. Any of you found a hundred dollar bill before? That, that's enough to make your heart start pounding. And so I stopped in my tracks, no lie. This is what I did. I started looking around going, and I did one of these and I just kind of panned the whole parking lot. All right, who's around? There's nobody around. And I'm thinking, there's a hundred dollar bill. It's underneath my truck in my spot. And I'd been, I'd been through this before where I handed the money in and I'm thinking, that guy stuck it in his pocket. But I'm thinking, somebody's lost a $100 bill. I have no idea to know how, what to do with this money, but I, 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 I kept it. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> I kept that $100 bill, but, but I, I eventually gave that $100 bill to somebody else. I figure it was easy come, easy go. God blessed it from, and I had the experience of finding $100 and it's an even greater experience to give $100 to somebody else. 
So, so this scenario where you're walking along the sidewalk and you see a $1,000 bill laying there and you've been praying because you need help, you're in a financial uh, a place where you have some financial difficulty. But I want you to imagine, as you imagine the happiness of finding that money, I want you to imagine a different scenario. And in this scenario, um, a close friend knows about your hardship and unbeknownst to you, they begin working double shifts. And they're working double shifts so that they can give you a $1,000 gift that would help you a lot. I want you to think about which would bring you the more joy, the $1,000 bill that you found on the sidewalk or the $1,000 gift that was given to you by a close friend who worked extra time to give you that money. The one that was intentional or the one that was simply chance? The one that was motivated by love or the one that was someone else's misfortune? The one that was based on relationship or the one that was just luck? I think it's easy for us to answer that question. And that that speaks of God's love for us. God's love is the one constant in our world. Romans 8 says that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. And that constant is worth more than all the comforts, the pleasures that this world can offer. It's the place where we find true gratitude of what someone else has done for us. It's based on God, it's based on his love. In every situation, in every circumstance, throughout our day, we have a choice. Either to recognize God's love and his grace and his blessings or not. We have a choice. Are we gonna recognize God's love, his provision, his blessing, or not? Max Lucado says it well, and he says this, I wake up in a world of miracles every morning. Every time I breathe, I use the oxygen and incorporate it into my body, it's a miracle. Every time I open my eyes and I see the beauty that surrounds me, it's a miracle. Every time I touch the hand of a baby, it's a miracle. Every time I take a a, a bite of food and put it into my mouth and chew it and my body digests it and uses it for energy for me to live on, it's a miracle. Just as surely as it was a miracle when God opened the waters of the Red Sea, just as surely it was a miracle when God fed the multitudes, uh, just as surely as it was a miracle when Jesus healed the blind man, we wake up in a day, every day in a world of miracles. We're surrounded by the miracles of God, and yet there are people who still take it for granted and want more. One day a man discovered that a friend had betrayed him. Greatly hurt by it, he went to him and he said, do you remember who picked you up when you were in the gutter? Do you remember who bailed you out of jail and loaned you some money when you needed it? Don't you remember who gave you your first job? And the man replied, yes, that was you. But what have you done for me lately? Unfortunately, that's how a lot of people view God and treat him. We have so much. But if things get hard, things get difficult, we start questioning, God, where are you? And what have you done for me? God's given us life, he's given us health, he's given us everything that we enjoy. But yet we can say something like that. What have you done for me lately? 1 Corinthians 4, 7 asks this question. What do you have that God hasn't given to you? Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. John 1, 16, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. We have been truly, truly blessed. A young man was feeling very proud of himself. As a new college graduate, he'd taken the CPA exam and passed with flying colors. Now he was a full-fledged, certified public accountant. His father had been an immigrant to the United States, and now he owned a little business filled Uh, With this newly acquired knowledge and self-importance, the young man began to criticize his father's way of keeping, keeping books, and he said, Dad, you don't even know how much profit you've made. Over here in this drawer are your accounts receivable. Over there are your receipts, and you keep your money all locked up in a safe. You don't even have any idea how much money you've made. And the father answered him. He said, Son, when I came to this country, the only thing I owned was a pair of pants. 
Now your brother is a doctor, your sister is an art teacher, and you are a CPA. Your mother and I own our own home. We have a car and we own this little business. Now add it up. Subtract the pants. <laughs> now all the rest is profit. That's what we need to do. We need to add it up. What did you come into this world with? No pants. You didn't even come in with pants. And now look at what you've got. Thank God. <laughs> look at what you have. Look at what you've been blessed. We need to add it all up. We came into this world with nothing but the eternal soul that God gave us. Everything else is profit. How could we ever say to God, what have you done for me lately? What he's done in the past is enough to sustain us forever if we never got another thing from him. It's enough. Let's worship God and praise him for what he's given to us. The story's told of a poor man who was given a loaf of bread and he thanked the baker, but the baker said, don't thank me, thank the miller who, who made the flour. So he thanked the miller, but the miller said, don't thank me, thank the farmer who planted the wheat. So he thanked the farmer. The farmer said, don't thank me, thank the Lord. He gave the sunshine, the rain, the fertility of the soil, and that's why you have bread to eat. We've gotten so sophisticated and we've gotten so smart that we think that we've done all this, that we've created all this, that we're the one who's created our own destiny, our own situation. It's so easy for us to get into some uh, complacent attitude like something is owed to us, like we need to have a certain kind of a home or drive a certain kind of a car or have a certain amount of money in a bank or in a retirement account. Like we've got some kind of, like it, that's, we deserve that. And we look at ourselves maybe from another uh, perspective and say, look what I've done for myself. Look, what I, look at the kind of home I live in. Look at the kind of car I drive. Or you might look at yourself and say, I don't have any of that. What's wrong with me? The reality is everything that we have is from God. He's the, how did you get so smart? You did that on yourself? I mean, we're talking about a farmer who, who gives the, the corn, who gives the wheat, who makes dirt. We don't do any of that. We can't make those things. Those are gifts from God. All we have is what he's given us. We're dependent on him. And it's only when we recognize, it, recognize that it puts it all in perspective, we can have the right attitude, an attitude of gratitude, which is grateful, thankful attitude. We call, we call it gratitude. Add it all up. Count your blessings. The psalmist writes in Psalm 103, verse one, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God has given us tremendous blessings. Would you stand with me this morning? Here's what I want us to do. I want us to give God thanks. See, the greatest blessing that was ever given to us was the immeasurable gift of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He died in your place. We sang about it earlier. He took your place so that you could live. He died a cruel death so that you didn't have to and you can be forgiven of your sins because of what he's done for you. His sacrifice covers your sins and gives you the assurance that when you're done with this life, when you depart and everything that you've accumulated has been taken out of your hands and you have nothing left through what he's done for you, you receive a gift of eternal life forever in heaven to be with him. It's enough to make us thankful. Can you give thanks? Yeah. How could we ever not give thanks? We can clap, we can say amen. But some of us, and I'd say most of us, are long due for making that list. And here's my, here's my guess as you start making a list. 
and you're not going to have enough paper, you're going to have to get another sheet. Because some things seem minute, like dirt. That dirt has all kinds of nutrients that makes that corn and that wheat grow. And we have not figured out how to make dirt. And I don't think we ever will. Some things we just realize we're totally and completely dependent on God. He's the foundation. He's the basis of it all. We need to give thanks. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. We're going to sing a song to close this service. And I want to invite people to come and pray because maybe you have needs this morning. If you have a need, maybe you, you have a, a, a financial need. Maybe you have a relational need. Maybe you're sick. I want, to, I want you to come and, and receive prayer for that. So if you are willing and kind enough to come and pray with people, would you just come and stand across the front? And if you have a need this morning, uh, if you want to pray, just come and stand up here at the front. Um, and if you have a need, come and find one of these people that are standing at the front. But I want to encourage all of us to take a step, to take a step and praise and worship the Lord and give thanks. So while we're praying and while we're doing all this, would you take the opportunity to give your thanks to the Lord, to lift your praise to Him and say, thank you, God, and you realize that no matter what the struggle that you're going through, no matter how difficult this past year has been, no matter what you've been through, no matter how dark your future is, God has not changed. His love is the same. We ought to respond to Him. Would you come as we sing this song and stand here, give an opportunity for you to worship the Lord, and if you need prayer, come and stand with one of these here. Share a, a thought with you. This is something that I read this week, and there's a professor that uh, was kind of making an illustration, and he said, you know, here was a blank sheet of paper. I don't, you, you're a long ways away. Some of you had old eyes, and you can't see this far, but... Um, he just drew a spot on the piece of paper and said, what, what is it that you see? What do you see? What we see is a black dot. But I wonder how many of us saw the paper that was written on. What happens is we see the issue, the problem, the circumstance, and we don't even see our big God who is so great, who is able, who can do anything, that the paper was, see what I'm saying? We get easily distracted and we start being ungrateful for what we don't have rather than being thankful for what we do have. We have an amazing God who does amazing things. This morning, if you, if you are not in a relationship with Jesus, you've never invited him into your heart and life. And this morning, maybe you've made that decision just through our time of prayer on your own. You just opened your heart and said, God, would you come into my life and save me? If you didn't do that and you need to, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Would you just pray with me? And if that's you, maybe everybody just bow your heads with me. And if that's you today and you say, I'm not in a relationship with Jesus. I don't know this love of God. I've never experienced hope. I've never experienced this joy and salvation that you're talking about. But I'm ready for that. I'm tired of my life how it's been. And I want to offer my life to Jesus and invite him to come into my life. Have a relationship with him. Is that, if that's you, would you just raise your hand across the room? Say, I'm responding to Jesus and I'm giving my life to him. Anyone else? Anyone else across the room? The greatest decision that you can do is to open your life and have Jesus come in and make his home in your heart. Thank you, Lord, for these that raised their hand and I pray, Jesus, that they would find you to be so near and so available and so amazing in the way that you love us and provide for us. We realize our eyes are open to see you're all around us. Everything that we have, God, you've given to us. Just ask God that as they invite you into their lives that you transform them and change them and help them to see differently from this point on. Bring joy and hope that comes through that relationship. Father, I pray for, for Becky Atchison's step or half-brother, God, that is, that is facing um, a month or two to live because of cancer. Father, in Jesus' name, would you work a miracle of healing? Would you show yourself strong? You raise people from the dead. You've given blind people sight. You've given deaf people hearing. 
you've made lame people walk. God, I pray that you would take his life and heal him of cancer today in Jesus' name. Others, God, who have cancer, who are praying the same prayer, God, we believe that you're able. You're our provider. You can speak a word. You created our bodies out of dirt. You can fix them. You're able to do that. Our faith, and we'll use that opportunity, God, to express our faith and give you thanks for your great care for us and every other need, God, that is represented here in this body. We trust you in Jesus' name. Everybody said together, amen. Amen. We have a lot to be thankful for. Let's give thanks in all circumstances, always giving thanks to God for his goodness.